Well, Ralph, um, first Manchester derby. How's this week been? Excited? Different feeling around the place? Yes, I mean, everybody knows uh, about the importance of this game for our supporters, but also for both teams. I think there is a lot at stake for both clubs uh, in this game. And uh, yeah, we've been preparing uh, well for that game. We had uh, three good training sessions so far, another one coming up tomorrow. And then uh, uh, we will be looking forward for that, for that first derby for myself. But obviously our players have played quite a few before. The other derbies you've been involved in, what games were there? Do you think they might come close to what you'll experience on Sunday afternoon? I think one of the biggest derbies in, in Germany is uh, Schalke versus Dortmund. And uh, I played quite a few of them in, in my two times when I was uh, head coach of Schalke. So I'm fully aware what that means for, for the supporters of both teams. Um, yes, so it will be a great game, for, as I said, for both teams of high importance. And uh, yeah, we are hopefully ready for this game and uh, trying to get uh, another good game away. So far, we are run beaten in the last three months uh, uh, away from home. And uh, we are fully aware that we need a top performance in order to get points out of this game. You said training's been good this week. How's Ronaldo been? Because it's uncharted territory for him. He's got one goal so far this year, hasn't he? He's not used to finding himself in this position. He's, he's normally scoring, celebrating. I mean, we, that's what we kind of have come to expect from him. Yeah, he had a very good start uh, into the season when he arrived at the club again. Um, and uh, yeah, as I said, in the last uh, couple of weeks, uh, we were we could have scored more goals. Uh, not only him, but also other players. Uh, for me, it's not that important uh, who scores the goals. It's more about uh, scoring the goals. And I think we have we have we had uh, prepared enough chances and opportunities in the last couple of games. Um, and uh, I would be more worried if we didn't do that. And uh, yes, of course, it would be good for Cristiano to score, but also for the, for the team, but also other players had uh, their chances against uh, Watford and missed them. So it's not only about Cristiano. Do you think that we forget that he's 37 and I think only Bruno Fernandes has, has played more minutes, hasn't he, this season? Uh, and we just have this impression that he's going to kind of go on forever and ever, and then the reality of the Premier League is it's tougher than that, isn't it? Yeah, it's the most physical league. Uh, you have no easy games. Uh, you have no games where you can say, OK, now we rotate eight players and we still easily win the games. This is the big difference uh, between England and other European leagues. Um, and we didn't have that many alternatives, to be honest, with Edison Cavani being, being injured and uh, having lost another important offensive player in the last uh, two or three months. So, yeah, that's why he had to play maybe more than uh, um, he, he maybe should have. But um, I mean, he's a full pro he's a professional. He recovers quickly between between games. And that's why we played him in, in the last three games from the start and for 90 minutes. Um, and what about Harry Maguire? Because he was an unused sub on the weekend and it must be quite tough for him. He's captain of this club. He's he's been part of the England side that's been very, very successful and to find himself on the bench, how, how has he reacted to that? And might we see him like, on the weekend? Like a, like a true captain, like a top professional. I, ex I explained to him why for this game against a team like Watford who would play a lot of looking for transitional moments, why I decided for some tactical reasons to play with, with Rafa and Victor. Um, we have quite a few top central defenders, centre backs, uh, um, and those three are on a similar level and uh, this had only tactical reasons. This was not a decision against uh, Harry, it was a decision uh, pro the other two in that game, but uh, on Sunday it might be different. And he's the sort of player you get that response from, given a, a chance? Is he the sort of player you expect to go and put in a fantastic performance? That's yes, what you've that's what he has always, so, so far since I have uh, uh, met him three months ago. He has always behaved like a true captain, like a professional. Uh, when he didn't play against Aston Villa in those two games, he did enormously well in training and again then deserved to come back into the team. Uh, and that's what uh, it's like on this position, but quite on a few other, uh, on a, in, a, in a few other areas of, of, of our team. We have enough competition. We have um, on each position normally two players who can play. 
Um, and this is what it's uh, all about. So as, as I said, there are no issues whatsoever for me or within the team about his role as a captain. He is a, he is a true captain and he is a top professional. John Murta um, spoke this week about the recruitment process being ongoing for a permanent long-term manager at the club. And there were some reports this week that Eric Ten Hag was supposedly your favourite for the, for the role. Is there any truth in, in that? So far, we haven't at all spoken about that. Uh, nobody, not only not John Murto, but nobody else. We haven't had that topic in the last uh, weeks and months since I'm here. So um, I know I know my opinion, but so far we haven't spoken about that. Uh, so this is what I can only what what I can tell you. Is your opinion one of admiration for him and what he's done? Well, I haven't. I, I don't know him to start with as a person, but obviously I, I see the development that Ajax took since he was there. I also know a little bit about his work that he did when he was uh, with Bayern Munich and uh, that he's one of the, the top coaches in Europe is obvious, but there are a few other top coaches in Europe. But as I said, we haven't spoken about any new manager so far uh, and therefore we also didn't speak about him. We were just talking about Pep before we started the interview. Your, your paths have crossed on a number of occasions. What do you like about him as a football manager, as a head coach? Because he's no doubt somebody you admire, isn't he? Well, he, it's not no coincidence that wherever he was, uh, Barcelona to start with, Bayern Munich, and now Manchester City, he worked for three, four, five years three years at Bayern Munich, I think four or five years at Barcelona, and now in his sixth year at Manchester City. Um, wherever he was, he not only was successful, he also implemented uh, his idea of football, and even on, in games where they weren't at their very best, where they lost games, you could still see how they want to play. And this is what it's all about in, in modern football. You need to have a clear identity. You need to know how do I want to play, and, uh, and then bring in players who fit to that style of football and uh, making sure that the club, if they sign 10 players, then seven or eight players in the end should uh, be the right players. And this is uh, what it's all about in football. And he has always shown that, similar to Jurgen Klopp uh, at Liverpool. And uh, it's no coincidence that those two clubs have dominated uh, the Premier League uh, in, the, in, in, in the last couple of years. Glass of wine with him afterwards? Um, I have no idea. Normally, I don't drink wine after oh, really? after the game, but uh, he usually that's apparently chooses very good wine. We have so many wine. interviews. There's so many things to I do. I think there's always the time for a glass of wine, isn't there? Afterwards, <laughs> apparently, he always chooses a good one. Good.